Okay, let's be real. I know you guys love OBS plugins. No, I'm serious. You guys have a problem. Go get some help. I've done a ton of videos talking about OBS plugins, and if you don't know what a plugin is, you can think of it like a Chrome extension, but for OBS. Basically, if you're really struggling to make your streams stand out, plugins are a really nice way of making your stream more fun and exciting for your viewers. So stop having a boring stream, stop having a boring life. Stop having a boring stream. Stop having a boring life. Today we'll be looking at a bunch of plugins from doing simple things like showing a widget that shows you're currently playing music on your stream, to doing more complex things like live rewind or slow motion for your camera. So lots of cool stuff coming up, so let's do it. Hey, what's up guys, it's... Don't shoot, don't shoot! Ow, shut up! Oh. This video is sponsored by Nerd or Die. Nerd or Die is a place where you can get stream designs, overlays, and alerts, and all of their designs are really easy to install using their unique one-click install for OBS Studio. But if you want to go in and customize their designs yourself, they even provide the original source files that you can go in and edit. So pick up your next stream design at Nerd or Die today. You know, I'm really getting sick of getting attacked in my own videos. Before we get started, you guys should know that there's way more plugins available for OBS, more than I'll be able to cover in this video. So I'll leave a link in the description box down below for the list of all the plugins available on the OBS forums, as well as the other two top five lists that I've already done. Also, you probably already guessed this, but none of these work with Streamlabs OBS because Streamlabs and plugins, they, they just don't work like that. First up, we have Virtual Cam. Now, Virtual Cam is a plugin that basically takes OBS and then turns it into a virtual webcam. It sounds really weird and it may not be super useful for people who are just streaming on Twitch, but some of you guys, I don't know, some of you guys might be teachers, you know? That's right, Jason, I know everything about you. Don't, don't lie to me. Well, with the whole global pandemic going on right now, a couple of you guys messaged me and you were like, Hey, what to do, Mr. YouTube? How can I use OBS with like Zoom or Skype or Discord or something? Well, that's basically what Virtual Cam does. It takes all your scenes and everything that you see in OBS and then pipes that out into a virtual webcam that you can plug into any other application that uses a webcam. So let's say you're in a conference call teaching a bunch of students. You can set up a few scenes in OBS. Maybe you might have one set up for your webcam, another for your desk desktop and then another one for like I don't know like your sick Beyblades collection or something and then yeah you just pump it out through virtual cam so setting up virtual cam is super easy you just download the installer step through the instructions it's gonna ask you how many virtual webcams you want to have set up I just set it to the maximum which is four then in OBS you just go to tools go to virtual cam then under target camera select any of the four virtual webcams you have set up then click start. Then you go into Zoom or Discord or whatever you're using, go into the settings where you would normally select your camera and then select the target camera that you selected earlier. And then everything you're seeing should now be appearing in that application. So pretty straightforward to set up. Alternatively, if you just wanna send a single scene or a single source, you can just right click on that scene or source, add a filter and then add a virtual cam filter. Other than that, you just select your target camera and then click the start button and then it's immediately sending to virtual cam. Okay, apparently after I've recorded this video already, it turns out the next version of OBS is going to be building in a virtual cam like feature directly into OBS. So you may not need this plugin by the time you watch this video. However, I'm not sure if that feature allows you to output a single scene or a single source over the virtual cam feature. So you may still wanna use this plugin, but I'm not sure. I may have to do an update video in the future, but I'm not gonna re-record this video, okay? Cause I already recorded it and I worked really hard on this. The next plugin is called Tuna. Now, literally the most common question I get asked every single stream is, how did you get your song information or your now playing info showing on your stream? So in my OBS setup, I have two text sources, one that shows the title of the song playing and then another showing the artist of the song playing. And when I switch songs in Spotify, it automatically updates those text sources. That's exactly what Tuna does. It basically just takes song information from Spotify or VLC or I think Last.fm and a couple other things and then puts that information into a text file as well as album art into an image file. And then you can bring all those files into OBS and they'll be updated automatically. Now, why is it called Tuna? 
I don't know, man. You think I made this or something? I'm just giving you guys the information. I assume most of you guys are using Spotify to listen to music. So to set it up with Spotify, you just go to tools, go into tuna settings, and then in the Spotify tab, click on the open login page. It's just gonna ask for standard permissions for viewing basic things like the song that you're listening to, your username, your mother's maiden name, you know, just simple things like that. You click agree to, you know, just give away your basic human rights. And then it gives you an authentication code, which you then put back into the tuna settings under where it says authentication code. Click on request token. So it says that you're logged in, then go back into the basics tab and start adding text files. You can set up multiple text files for different song information information so that later on when you import these text files into OBS, you can set up different fonts to customize the way your song information looks like on your stream. The output editor will tell you how to format your text file. So if you just want to show the track title, then type in percent %t. Now you can start Tuna by clicking the start button and pressing OK. And then back in OBS, you just add text sources that point to the text files that you just created in Tuna settings. And if you want, you can also show the cover art by adding an image file and then pointing it to the song cover path, again, set up in Tuna settings. Then after that, it's just a matter of customizing your text fonts the way you like it. And then every time you change song in Spotify, it should change the text files automatically. So yeah, there you go. You can stop asking me how to do that now. The next one is called dynamic delay. And this one allows you to add rewind or slow-mo to any source in OBS. There are so many creative ways that you can use a plugin like this. Like for example, you can set up a hotkey to do an instant replay, but not just any instant replay that you've probably seen in other streams like Shroud Stream. You can set up your gameplay to rewind and reverse to 20 seconds ago, then replay the last 20 seconds, then hit another hotkey to fast forward your gameplay so that it catches up with your real time gameplay. Or you can have it set up so that your camera slows down like one of those shampoo commercials and I'm a hundred percent certain that you're looking at the long hair right now and you're like nutty do the hair flip thing but I'm not gonna do it because what do you think I am a dancing monkey you think I'm just gonna do something just because you okay so that was super cringe but what you'll notice now apart from me looking like a freaking Mayan princess you'll notice that my audio is now lagging behind my camera and that's because the dynamic delay plugin doesn't currently support audio so what you're gonna need to do is have another hotkey set up to snap your camera back to real time. This one for sure is going to need a full video explaining how it all works. But here's a brief explanation of how it works. You just right click on any source that you want, go to filters, then add a dynamic delay filter. Your duration is gonna be how far behind your camera is when you do slow-mo or rewind your camera. And then you're gonna see four sliders for your slow and fast forward and then you're slow and fast backwards. So what are all of these? If you go into your settings and then into your hotkeys and scroll down to the source that you applied the dynamic delay filter to, you'll see some hotkeys added for all of these sliders. So for example, if you wanted to slow down your camera, you'd add a hotkey for the slow forward function. And then the speed it gets slowed down to is determined by that slow forward slider. So if it's at 50%, then when I hit the hotkey, my camera will slow down to 50% until my camera becomes 10 seconds delayed from real time or whatever I have set up in that duration field. So that's the basic idea of how it works. But if you guys want a full length guide on the dynamic delay plugin, let me know because I got some crazy ideas that I want to implement into my own stream. But if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. The next plugin is called screenshot filter. And this one is incredibly simple. All it does is it allows you to add a filter to any scene or source in OBS which adds a hotkey. And when you hit that hotkey, it just takes a screenshot of that scene or source. If you want to set this up, you just right click on any scene or source, go into filters and add a screenshot filter, and then change your destination folder to any folder that you want. Then you go into your settings and go into your hotkeys and you'll see a new hotkey there called screenshot filter. So when you hit that hotkey, it just takes a screenshot and saves it to the folder that you selected earlier. Okay, okay, boring, boring, nutty, this is boring. None of my viewers care if you can take screenshots and I get it, but you know me, I'm all about thinking outside the box and creativity. What I did is I combined the screenshot filter with the freeze frame filter, which I've already done another video on, but basically I have a channel point reward, which we call the thug life reward and the thug life reward basically freeze frames my camera but at the same time i can use the screenshot filter to take a snapshot of that thug life freeze frame 
and then save it to a folder. Okay, that's nice, but let's take it a little bit further. We can combine that with another program called Discord Auto Upload. Now, shout outs to Dragners. He was in the streamer showcase video I did. He was the one that showed me this program, but essentially what it does is it scans a folder and anytime you add a new image to that folder, it automatically uploads that image to a Discord server. So this is actually a really cool way of not only just creating something fun for your stream, but also driving your community to your Discord server thus growing your discord it's very genius <sighs> okay so it turns out the next version of obs is also going to be adding screenshot capability however the way it works is you have to select a source and then hit a hotkey which wouldn't work well if you're trying to use the screenshot capability as a channel point reward so i still recommend using the screenshot filter but just know that Yes, by the time you're watching this, if you're watching this months from now, you probably have screenshot capability built into OBS. The last one is called Media Controls. Now this one is just one of those really simple quality of life improvements. If you've ever added a media source to OBS, like a video file or a GIF, one of the things that you can't do is you can't pause that video or skip to the next video or restart that video. You just don't have any controls for that. Media Controls just adds a simple dock to OBS that does allow you to do all those things. So you can pause a media source, you can skip to the next video, or you can restart that video. Again, nothing crazy, but I'm sure that's gonna be useful to someone out there. Okay, this is getting ridiculous at this point, okay? The next version of OBS also has a very similar feature added in where if you select a source, you can pause and skip through that video the same way that media controls work. So this has really just ruined this video. However, again, it doesn't quite work the same. Media controls dock has a whole dock so you don't have to select a source to skip through it. It just shows all of the sources playing. So you can still use media controls. I have it installed. I'm gonna keep it installed, but yeah, just, God damn it, OBS, you just ruined my video. But yeah, that's another five plugins that you can use to upgrade your streams. Guys, if there's any more plugins that you'd like me to do a video on, or if you want me to do a dedicated video on any of the plugins we covered in this video, leave a comment down below. Also, if you guys need any help setting up any of these plugins, I just did a massive overhaul of the Discord, so check that out. And if you also want to see me work on some crazy effects or just ask me any questions, you can also join my live stream. I stream on Twitch four nights a week, but I got to get out of here. I got to go pick up my kids, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Wait a second. I don't even have any kids.